Upgrading to Windows 10 is free and it's easy. In this video I'm going to show you how. In talking to clients I know there's a lot of confusion going on out there about how to do it, whether it can be done, whether you're better off just buying a new computer, how much it costs, just lots of confusion. The most compelling reason to upgrade to Windows 10, especially if you're running Windows 7, has to do with security. There are security flaws in Windows 7 and even Windows 8 that Microsoft is just not going to fix. To make matters worse, Windows 7 has an expiration date. As of January 14th of 2020, Microsoft is not going to do any more security updates for Windows 7. And Windows 8 has a few more years of life left in it, but really you're better off going ahead and upgrading Windows 8 to Windows 10 now as well. Because it's a free upgrade just like Windows 7, and it's easy to do. Now Windows 10 has had some growing pains, but it, at this point it's pretty stable. I would say that it's more stable than any other version of Windows. I think the most common reason I hear from people about not wanting to upgrade to Windows 10 is the interface. In Windows 10 when you click the start button it brings up a bunch of tiles which is just very jarring and so different from earlier versions of Windows. Towards the end of this video I'm going to show you a way to make Windows 10 look a lot more like Windows 7 or even Windows XP if you want. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10. In a future video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade from Windows 8 to Windows 10, which is done similarly, but there are a few differences. And then in another video, I'm going to show you how to do a clean install of Windows 10 from scratch. And again, all of these ways of upgrading or installing Windows 10 are free. You do not have to pay for another license. So right here is the most common upgrade scenario from Windows 7 to Windows 10. Uh, what I've got here is a computer that's running Windows 7. This is the Pro version. It's activated with Microsoft and that's important. To check that to be sure, in your case, you can click Start, right click on Computer, that's right mouse button click, and go to Properties. And down here at the bottom, it says Windows is activated, and up at the top it tells me the version of Windows. This happens to be Windows 7 Professional, but the way I'm going to show you how to upgrade works for both Professional and Home of Windows 7. Close that out, and I'm just going to open up Google Chrome. So what you want to do is a Google search. If you do a Bing search or a Yahoo search or some other search, it may not show you this result. So. Right now I'm going to do a Google search. So you do that on any browser. If you just go to www.google.com, you can do a search. So the search you want to do is Windows 10 download. And the first result you should get would be this one. Download Windows 10 Microsoft, and this is the address. I'm going to click that, and download tool now. In Chrome, it comes up down here. If you're using Internet Explorer, it'll come up in the middle. And if you're using Firefox, it'll be up here under a down arrow that you need to click and then run it. So I'll click it, say yes to running. And at that point, you can close down the browser. So getting a few things ready. This can take two minutes or it could take 10, depending on uh, the speed of your computer. Okay, got to agree to the license terms. So what do you want to do? In this case, we want to upgrade this PC now. It does also give you the option to create a USB flash drive where you could store the copy of Windows 10 upgrade and then move it to another computer, but you're much better off just doing it on the computer that you want to upgrade. So upgrade this PC now, I'll click Next, and it's going to go through the process of downloading Windows 10. It'll go to 100%, then it'll verify the download, and then it will actually create the installer on this computer. And this can take 5 minutes or, you know, 30 minutes, or maybe more, depending on uh, the speed of your computer, and more importantly in this step, the speed of your internet connection. Alright, so it's uh, about halfway done creating the, uh, the installer. To give the upgrade the best chance possible of working, one thing you want to do is come down, down by the clock and close as many programs that are running in the background as possible. If you don't see any here that you can, uh, you can actually close, click this triangle 
The only program I've got running in the background on this computer is antivirus, and I definitely want to turn that off. If I right click on it, I can click and say yes, and that will disable the antivirus. But basically what you want to do is come in here, right click on everything you see, and if it has the option to exit or close, whatever it is, do that. Probably the most important thing to, uh, to disable or close is your antivirus, so it can get in the way. You don't have to do that, but it increases the chances of the upgrade going through smoothly. All right, so back here on the Windows 10 setup, I have to accept license terms again. All right, so the installer has detected that the Intel HD graphics family is going to have problems with Windows 10. And what that is, it's the drivers for the graphics adapter in this computer. If it says this about the graphics adapter in your computer, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Once Windows 10 gets installed, it's very good at picking up uh, the latest drivers for the hardware. Now, if it says here that your antivirus isn't compatible with Windows 10, what you need to do is click Start, go to Control Panel, uninstall the program, find it in the list, and uh, uninstall it. You can then reinstall it after the Windows 10 upgrade has happened. Chances are like it's just a really old version of the antivirus software, which probably isn't doing you much good anyway. If it's so old, it's not compatible with Windows 10. But if it tells you that a program's not compatible, you can uninstall it here and then reinstall the latest version after Windows 10 is, uh, is installed. But for this, the graphics, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna hit confirm. So it's ready to install. It's gonna install Windows 10 Pro. It's gonna keep my personal files and apps. If for some reason you don't want it to keep your personal files and your apps, what you can do is click change what's kept and it'll do a more clean install of Windows 10. However, I'd rec I wouldn't recommend that. You're better off keeping your programs and your files the way that they are. So I'll click install. And at this point, it's probably gonna be a, a while. Um, on this computer, more than likely, it's gonna take about 20 minutes to do the install. It's got a solid state drive in it. It's got a Core i5 processor, uh, eight gigabytes of RAM. It's reasonably fast computer. On your computer, it could take longer, just depending on how fast it is. But really, at this point, just walk away for uh, at least 30 minutes. If you have a fast computer, and a couple of hours, you've got kind of a slow one. All right, um, that took about, I'd say 25 minutes on my computer here. For privacy settings, I always turn these off. If you're using something that uh, needs them on in the future, it'll come up and prompt you to turn them on. So Windows 10 is installed. Um, I'll just close the, uh, the Edge browser. Edge, uh, this E right here, that's the Edge browser. It's not Internet Explorer, it's a, uh, the replacement for Internet Explorer, um, and it's about to be replaced with a, a different version of, uh, of a browser. I'm not sure if they're going to still call it Edge. It's okay. It works pretty well. Um, if you click the Start button, if you need Internet Explorer, actual Internet Explorer, if you just type in Internet, there it is. You can just click on it. It'll come up and run. Now the resolution on the screen has changed. Um, it was 1080p. Um, this is quite a bit lower. I'm gonna go to display settings. So I right clicked on the desktop, display settings.
you know, the resolution, the most it can go up to is 1280 by 1024. So this is a problem with the uh, graphics drivers. And Windows 10 should be able to pick up new drivers and load them. It's probably already working on it. So on Windows 10, if you click the Start button and go to this uh, sprocket icon, it's Settings. Scroll down, you can go to Update and Security. And it may already be doing it, but if you hit Check for Updates, it will go and get the latest version of the drivers. Here we go, Intel Corporation driver, HD graphics, it's downloading it, it'll, it'll install it and it'll put the resolution back where it was. It's also getting the latest version of uh, Windows 10, all of the latest updates. It looks like it detected my printer and it's going to get a driver for it. So basically you just leave this alone. I'm going to close that. Oh, there it goes. I think it just updated. There you go. So if I right click and go to uh, display settings, resolution is now 1920 by 1080 so 1080p. So it fixed the graphics issue. If I click start, actually there's another way to do it. If you right click on start, right mouse button click, you can go to system, and if you scroll down it'll tell you the version of Windows 10 that's installed, and if I click change product key up here at the top it says Windows is activated with a digital license. That means the upgrade went through, it's licensed, I don't have to pay anything. And that'll be the case for the vast majority of you if you follow these steps. So while Windows 10 is updating itself, I'm going to show you some of the things that I do after I install Windows 10 on people's computers. I'm going to click Start. So this is the Windows 10 Start menu. Um, a lot of people really don't like it. Um, it's it's not that bad. Um, over here on the left, this is a list of all the programs that are installed on the computer, as well as apps. And apps are like an app on your phone. It's just they made them for Windows. Um, some of them are useful, others you know not really. If you want to um, to uninstall any of them, uh, if you right click on them, you'll have the option to either uninstall it, or you if it's something you can't uninstall, which some of them you just can't you can at least remove it from the list so you don't have to look at it. I'm going to go ahead and uninstall Solitaire. I'm also going to come over here to these tiles and unpin these. The down arrow, what that means is it's it's working on downloading whatever app is supposed to be there. If you just unpin it, it won't show up. I'm going to uninstall Skype because I don't use it just unpinning all these that I know I'm not going to use. You can just wait for them to fill in and you can decide whether or not you want them. Um, just like over here, if you right click, if I right click on OneNote, I get the uh, unpin from start or just full uninstall it. And I don't use OneNote, so there's no point in it being on the computer. Right. If I come down here to the clock and hit the up arrow, I can see the programs that are running, and my ABG turned itself back on after the restart. I'm going to go to Chrome and go to ninite.com. This is an extremely useful website. What it does is, all of these um, programs here, they're all free, and if you want any of them, all you have to do is put a check in the box, 7-zip is a unzipping or compressing, uncompressing file program. I'm going to get VLC, which is a media player. I've already got AVG, so I won't check that. I'm going to put TeamViewer on it and CD Burner XP. TeamViewer is good if you want to remotely access another computer or allow someone else to remotely access your computer. And that's the free version. CD Burner XP uh, has been around for a long time. Basically, it's a disk burning program, like CDs, DVDs, that kind of thing. So once you've checked what you want, you just come down here and click Get Your Ninite, and it'll download one small program. In Chrome, it's down here, Internet Explorer or Edge, it'll be in the middle, and Firefox, if you're using Firefox for your browser, it'll be up here under the down arrow. But basically, you just need to click it and allow it to run. 
What it does is it downloads and installs each program one after another. And it does this without asking you any questions about where you want to install it, are you sure, that kind of thing. It just takes the default answer and gets it done. So 7-Zip and TeamViewer are already installed. And there they are right there under Recently Added. On Windows 10, if you want to, uh, to find something you just can't find it in the list, if you just come down here and start typing whatever it is you're looking for, 7-Zip. If I just type 7, it shows up here at the top. So that's a good way to find the programs if you're, uh, if you're having trouble locating them in the Start menu. So those are all installed. So if I click Start, type in CD Burner, there it is. Click on it and it'll open. There is one other program uh, here on Ninite. I'm going to click Change Apps, but actually I'm going to just refresh the page so it takes those checks out. If you're not liking the Start menu, like some people just don't like this or even hate it, um, there is a way to make the Start menu look a whole lot more like Windows 7 did, or even Windows XP, which a lot, a lot of people are more comfortable with. Um, down here under Utilities, I'm going to click Classic Start. I'm going to go through the Get Your Nine Night again. Okay, so it got installed. I'm just going to close it, close Chrome. And if I click the Start button, now the Start button looks a lot more like Windows 7 did. So what I'm going to do is right-click on Start. That's right mouse button, click on Start, and go to Settings. And this will bring up the settings for this classic Start menu. The changes I make is under Show All Settings, and under Start Menu Style, the classic 2 column, is generally what most people like. They also have a Windows 7 style that looks like that, and a classic style which looks a little bit more like Windows XP did. I'm going to stick with that, and under Skin, the default is Metro. You can change that to Classic. If you just do that and click Start, you'll see it. So it looks like that. Full Glass kind of looks like that. That's kind of low contrast, it's not a good look. Smoked glass, looks like that. A lot of people I find enjoy this. But there's also Windows 8 and a few others, like Windows Arrow. That's a fairly good looking Windows 7 style. Windows Basic, looks pretty similar, and Windows XP Luna which that is very Windows XP looking. But pretty much all of them give you access to the same things, a list of programs, a list of apps, this PC, pictures, your main folder, documents, control panel, your printers, and a lot of this stuff is hidden in Windows 10. I'm going to change it back to smoked glass. Yeah, I like that one. So it just gives you more direct access to the things that you're used to seeing if you uh, if you like Windows 7 or even Windows XP. If you do need to get back to the main start menu, like the regular Windows 10 start menu, it's right up here. Just like that. Let's go check the settings again. I'm going to click Start and go to PC Settings. This will get us to the Windows 10 settings. Scroll down a little bit and go to Update and Security. And it's wanting to restart to um, finalize the, uh, the updates. When Windows 10 does its updates, it'll generally count up to 30%, restart the computer. When it comes back up, it'll count from 30 to 100. And how long this takes uh, mostly depends on what kind of drive you have in your computer. If you have a hard drive as your C drive, this will take longer. Um, if you have a solid state drive like the one that I have in my computer here, it'll go by pretty quickly. And that's it. That's how you upgrade your Windows 7 PC to Windows 10 for free.